Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm taking a break from Wolverine and Deadpool content because that's probably what the next couple of videos I'm going to be making is. But I want to talk about the boys a little bit more. Recently at San Diego Comic Con they announced there's going to be a new spin-off show called Vought Rising which I'm incredibly excited about. It's going to be starring Soldier Boy as the main character which is going to be fantastic and I'm very excited for Jensen Ackles' return. But I thought for right now we should go ahead and take a look back at all of the shows and all of the different things that they have released so far. So today we're going to be ranking every single season of television shows that they have released as a part of the boys universe and uh yeah let's dive right into this shall we so starting off in dead last place i still enjoyed this and i thought that it was fun but it's gonna be the boys diabolical for people who do not know this is like a little anthology animated series that they released that's kind of connected to the boys but not really connected to the boys there are three episodes in this that are considered canon Aaron Kripke was like hey by the way these specific episodes everything that happens in this is stuff that actually happened in the world of the boys and then the rest of them are more like what if scenarios things that are totally possible and um it's fun there's definitely a lot of fun to be had with these episodes I feel like uh Homelander and this is inter entertaining as always and all of the characters for the most part have a lot of fun stuff to do and I do like the fact that they're just showing us more of things that could be happening in this world that we're not quite getting to see but um as far as the show as a whole goes it's an anthology series so there's some episodes that are like really fantastic and deal with more complex things that I'm like, okay, yeah, that's really interesting. I'm glad we got to see this. And there's other episodes where I'm like, this just kind of felt like filler and not really that interesting to me and uh overall it feels like the boys but it also feels like it's missing that flair of like just the dynamic that the boys have in the actual live action show. And um as much as I enjoyed the boys diabolical, I feel like it's just not quite something for me. I think that the live action shows just hit a nerve that I enjoy a little bit more and just something about them feels so interesting and the world that they're in just feels fantastic in live action and uh you bring us this animated version where it's like there's some stuff that works there's some stuff that's really cool and um I feel like as far as the animation goes it's not like bad but it's also not like there's movies out right now where it's like it's animated and it shows it would only work in animation and i feel like this show just doesn't do anything that special with the animation that makes it where it would be on a higher level that being said still enjoy it and i enjoy everything that they've done with the boys i feel like they haven't had a bad season of television at all in the boys universe so this was a little bit of a difficult ranking to do Alrighty, but coming in fifth place, we have this most recent season of The Boys. I really enjoyed a lot of the elements of this season. I feel like there was definitely a lot of fun to be had. Um, in my opinion, everything that they did with Huey in this season worked really relatively well for me. I really enjoyed a lot of the stuff that they did with Starlight. I feel like Erin Moriarty really got to show off her acting abilities in this, and it was a lot of fun whenever she got to play different versions of herself. And overall, the last episode... I've said this in my review for the show this season, the last 20 minutes are like some of the best 20 minutes in the entirety of the boys universe, but I feel like there was so much beating around bushes and so much dragging out of different storylines here that it felt mostly like filler. This entire season was really slow. They, uh, kind of skipped around some of the more interesting stuff that they could have potentially talked about like this is an election year and um there's a lot of stuff with you know political turmoil and stuff that's going on with the boys universe and they kind of like really quickly brushed past you know the trial of homelander and they really quickly brushed past some of the stuff with the political intrigue we never really got to see who the other candidates were even fighting against uh newman and singer were and it's like i feel like there was such a missed opportunity to kind of dive into more of the political thriller aspects of this show and instead we got side plots with like frenchy just retreading stuff that he's already dealt with we had kimiko going with the shining light and kind of like figuring out some weird mystery stuff that's going on with them and we ended up not having any payoffs to either of those arcs in my opinion i feel like everything with frenchy and colin just kind of went to waste the second colin uh not Colin, the second that Frenchie decided to turn himself in because he's done a bunch of murders and he feels really bad about himself. And then Kimiko with the Shining Light, we get to see like why she was never able to speak before. And it does a good job of kind of introducing us to the fact that she's mute because she can't speak anymore. And like that stuff was interesting. But at the same time, it's like, that's just retreading stuff that we've gone over in season two and in season one. And it's like, we are four seasons into the show. We already know everything about these characters. We know their origin stories. Why are we still doing flashbacks with some of these characters? It just kind of felt unnecessary. It kind of felt like they were just trying to drag out the season as long as possible so that they can make a cool, like, you know, ending point for this season so that the next season can come in and it could be a really big triumphant moment. But um, as a whole, the season just felt like it took a really really long time to get going and then it finally got good in the second to last episode and then the last episode came and it's just like that's it and uh as much as i enjoy the boys and i think that they did do a pretty good job with some of the stuff that happened this season there also was like everything with huey kind of felt like unnecessary and it kind of felt like they're just like trying to make 
Huey as miserable as possible. Um, and I just feel like there was a lot of missed opportunities here, a lot of missteps. And uh, it just didn't feel as bold and out there as the boys usually feels. Like, I feel like something that I really like about the boys' universe is at any given point, it feels like anybody could be murdered. And it feels like Homelander is just a total monster. But we don't really see him killing anybody this season we don't really see him doing anything drastic or being as much of a wild card except for that episode where he goes down and he kills all of the people who are terrible to him when he was younger he doesn't really do anything to any of the new characters in the show and it doesn't really feel as shocking and as stunning as the boys universe usually feels like i said i had fun with this season i feel like there was definitely a lot of fun to be had in the last episode and it definitely feels like kind of an empire strikes back season like next season's gonna come out and it's gonna retroactively make certain parts of this season better but as it stands right now it is probably my least favorite season of the boys so far Alrighty, and coming in fourth place, we have Gen V. In my opinion, this is just an absolutely incredible season of a television show. And I think that this is just something that is a great testament of how good the boys universe is. This is my fourth place. I would probably rank this above an 8.5 out of 10. Like this is an incredibly interesting episode, not episode, season of television. And it's so good. I feel like for one, the episodic nature of it is fantastic. There's so much mystery and intrigue that happens in it. Um, golden boy is only in one episode of the show but he's such an impactful character that actor did a brilliant job playing him for just that small amount of time he is in the show and um characters like and andre 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 there we go um just has like such an incredible like nuance to them and they have just like such an interesting like conflicted nature and i feel like they do such a good job of like all of these characters are going through so much and they really want to be the best and they really want to do whatever they can to kind of make a difference and actually be heroes and it's so satisfying seeing superheroes in this light where it's like they're not all terrible they're not all toxic they're not like the members of the seven who are all really evil and secretly just want to do whatever the hell they want they actually have you know a purpose in life and they really want to do things to kind of make a difference and whenever they realize that there's some sketchy stuff going on with this school they don't want to just sit back and kind of let things play out they want want to kind of solve the mystery they want to figure out what's going on and they want to make a difference they want to actually be heroes and that is so satisfying to me i think that marie is an incredibly cool character in this everything that they do with jordan lee is fantastic their entire like power set and the whole concept of a gender fluid character who has two different sets of powers when they're a guy versus when they're a girl is so interesting like i love everything about like the girl being more of the offensive one and then the guy being more of the defensive one who's more tough and rugged that's so interesting like i think that as far as the power sets and everything goes in this show it has some of the most unique uses of powers ever we also get a bunch of characters just using their powers for everyday tasks which i love and it's something that i feel like superhero media always kind of like skimps out on like if there's a character who can fly he's gonna fly just to fly like he's not gonna need like a specific reason to go use this power and this show does a good job of doing that they're just a bunch of teenagers partying at a college and they're having a fun time and uh, overall i think that the uh, comedy in this show works incredibly well. I think that the action sequences are fantastic. Everything with Sam beating up a bunch of SWAT members and them all, you know, dying brutally. And we're seeing it in his mind where everything's like a bunch of puppets and it's so weird. Fantastic. I think that everything with um, them going inside of, uh, I'm blanking on her name right now. The evil blonde girl. Evil blonde girl. I'm just going to continue talking and then when I think of her name, I'm going to say it. But um, whenever they go into her mind and it's just like a bunch of like really like morbid stuff and like they're just like trying to figure out what's going on and then they're getting like peeks back into their old lives and it's just like such an interesting way to introduce these characters and do flashbacks in a way that feels natural and organic and overall i just had a really really good time with this season i think that it was fantastic and i'm very excited for the next season um and uh hopefully uh, it's as good and it lives up Alrighty, and coming in third place, we have the first season of The Boys. Um, overall, I love this season. I think that it is such a great pilot to the show. It does such a great job of showcasing how diabolical and evil some of these superheroes are and showing how bad the seven can be and um overall i think that they just do such an incredible job of setting up just how sick and twisted this universe kind of is i like the fact that it starts off with a very whimsical scene and we're getting to see huey and robin and they're so excited and they're like really happy and they're just living a nice fun little casual life and then just how quickly everything get, get turned on its head because they just step outside robin stands in the road for just a little bit and then boom dead that is just such an interesting way to start off a TV show. And right off the bat, you're in it. You're like, oh my god, what the hell is happening? What's going to go on with this character? Um, He, you know, has to deal with, like, thought and their team and everything that where they're like okay we're just gonna pay you off and everything's gonna be okay you can just never talk about this ever this is like you know you're not allowed to speak of this and uh he's like 
no, I'm not going to do that. And it does such an interesting job of setting up the fact that Huey is one of the first humans who, in the history of this universe, who's seen all those shitty things that Devot has done and is like, I'm not just going to take up your pay money. I don't want to just get paid off and, you know, you guys never address this ever because he thinks that the superheroes need to be held accountable for what they're doing. And uh, he meets Butcher and everything with the way that they meet is fantastic. All of the stuff with them and Translucent and killing Translucent is fantastic. And just right off the bat, we're getting such an interesting dive into a different look at superhero hero media. We're getting Marvel versus DC is like such a big conversation that everybody's always talking about. And meanwhile, Amazon was like, let's do something completely different. Let's make a world with super powered beings who aren't heroes. Because realistically speaking, if a bunch of people get superpowers, they're not all going to be good guys. It's not going to happen. They're not going to be, you know, Superman. They're not going to be Spider-Man. They're not going to be these characters who are going through so much like personal trauma and are like, you know what, let's still save the greater good. No. They're going to be doing things for their own self-gain, their own self-worth. And uh, I think that they just do such a great job of showcasing how bad the superheroes can be. And I absolutely love everything they set up in this first season. I think that everything with Bot is fantastic. A lot of the propaganda and a lot of the, like, fake, oh, this is stuff that the superheroes do. And, like, showing off how cool and epic they are is fantastic. Um, everything with Starlight in this first season is fantastic. I love her also finding out, oh my god, these superheroes aren't actually good guys, because all of her life she wanted to be a superhero, she wanted to be like the Seven, and the Seven aren't actually good, and it's so hard for people in that universe to kind of like see that and wrap all their head around it, and it's such an interesting way to kind of like show us how bad superheroes can be, and how bad people with these powers can be, because when they're unchecked, they can't do anything to really stop them, and I think that that's awesome. Alrighty, and coming in second place, we have season three of The Boys. I absolutely love this season, and I think that it does a lot of really interesting things. For one, Jensen Ackles as Soldier Boy is incredible casting, and everything with his character in this is absolutely fantastic. I love the fact that this kind of sets up The Boys kind of working with superheroes because they realize sometimes you need to fight fire with fire, and I absolutely love just overall the arcs of these people. They're all being driven away, and they're kind of separated in a way that the boys don't really get separated in any of the other seasons and i think that as far as standalone seasons go this one's the best at being one complete arc we get to see butcher get as close as he possibly can to homelander they get the epic fight during hero gasm where they're face to face laser to laser and that is an incredible fight sequence i think that it is probably the best fight sequence in the entire show and um overall it just does so much great things i think that the deep being brought back into the boys here I mean, being brought back into the seven here is a whole lot of fun. I think that everything with A-Train, realizing that he's kind of a shitty person and he wants to do better, and um, him not knowing the best way to do it is fantastic. Um, I think that his heart-to-heart -heart moment that he has with Huey during the Herogasm episode is fantastic. And I think that overall, everything with that Herogasm episode is, like, perfect. I think that that might be one of the best episodes of television ever because we get that incredible fight sequence, which is Soldier Boy versus Homelander versus Butcher, and they're, they're all fighting against each other, and it's fantastic. We we get some of the funniest stuff with the deep and we get some of the most like shocking moments from the boys which that's something about the boys is like they've always been that tv show where one of their main goals is to just do stuff that's so disturbing that the audience literally has to like take a second before watching the rest of the episodes and uh, i think that that's fantastic i think that uh mother's milk kind of stepping into more of a uh, leadership role here is fantastic his relationship with starlight starts building in this uh season and uh, i think that overall all of these characters have great character arcs, great character journeys. Um, the death of Stormfront in this season and the way that it kind of like pushes Homelander over the edge is fantastic. And uh, the way that this season ends with Homelander literally killing somebody and then getting applauded is fantastic. It shows that Homelander, despite being a terrible person and it kind of being more of an open thing that he's a terrible person, he's gotten to a point where he's so popular that people don't care. And I think that that is so interesting and it's such a great way to end his character journey in this season. And uh, overall, I just think that season three is an incredible season of television. That being said, coming in first place for me, it's gonna be season two of The Boys. I think that this season is just absolutely incredible. And there's so many things that I can talk about, but the first thing I do wanna mention is the girls get it done stuff in this season is absolutely incredible. The bi representation in the season is absolutely incredible. I love everything that they do with Queen Maeve in this season and um, everything with her coming out as bisexual is fantastic. The stuff with um, Homelander killing Supersonic and oh my God, anytime we get a moment where it kind of feels like um, the boys are finally gonna get an upper hand and then Homelander is just able to absolutely crush their hopes and dreams immediately. And he's so menacing and terrifying in this season. I feel like this is kind of the peak of 
of when Homelander was the scariest, in my opinion, because since then, there's been a lot of moments where it's like, there are a lot of characters who can stand face to face with him. And uh, in this season, we do get stuff with like Jean Giancarlo Esposito's character staring at him and being like, you're not a superhero. You're not a god. You are a bad product. And like, oh, everything with that absolutely fantastic and um overall there's just a lot of be ha of fun to be had with this season i think that stormfront is an incredible villain and her introduction in here is great i think that everything with uncovering the mystery of what happened with becca and finding out that she's still alive and she's out there somewhere and the introduction of ryan is really fantastic because i know a lot of people nowadays are kind of like i don't really care about much about ryan ryan's not that interesting of a character but like everything with him at the beginning was fantastic and the entire um moral debate of like if he's raised by like an actual loving mother, if he's actually, you know, treated right and he has a regular upbringing, is he going to be a better version of Homelander? Is he going to be actually like Superman? And it's absolutely fantastic. I love everything that they're setting up with that in this season. And I think that they do a really good job with that. And overall, just like the girls get it done thing is so funny to me because they start off with like doing a really bad job with it and having like the three women like in some fake little Vought movie beating up a bunch of characters or whatever and just like having their little Avengers endgame moment where all the ladies walk out and it's they go from that to at the end of the season Maeve and Kamiko and Starlight all beating up on Stormfront that is so satisfying and it's just such an incredible journey for this season and I think one thing that this season does incredibly well compared to the other ones is the boys are on the run this entire season like they are never really at a point where they feel like they have the upper hand until we get into that final episode and I think that that's something that I just insanely appreciate about this season is it feels the most like the boys are at a loss and the seven is always having the upper hand and then by the end of the season Homelander kind of lost and this is the only season that ends with Homelander not being on top and I think that that's something that makes this season really stand out to me. I think that all of the seasons of The Boys are incredibly good, but this one just has that slight edge on it, in my opinion. But that being said, that was it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for coming by and checking it out. I love and appreciate you guys so much for watching. And if you liked it, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Bow. Bow, bow.